going to show you guys double displacement reaction. First off, I've got sodium uh, hydroxide here. It's an inorganic compound uh, used in the manufacture of uh, water, uh, pulp and paper, uh, detergents and soaps. Okay, um, it's in the form of pellets, and so it's a solid. I have it in the container is a solid. It's not until I dissolve it in water, right? So not until I add water, let's move this and put NaOH, right? Plus water as a liquid that I actually form the NaOH aqueous, meaning it's dissolved in water. This is the aqueous solution. So I've got the pellets that I dissolved in water on Friday um, in this beaker. Copper sulfate here, this is a, the hydrate form. It's a blue powder. It's an irritant, right? So if, it, if you were to inhale it and, and put it on skin, it's gonna start to irritate. Uh, it's actually toxic for the environment, so it's not something that we'd wanna just throw down the drain. As I mentioned, it's a hydrate. It's got actually five molecules of water attached to it. And same thing here. All right, the Cooper's, uh, the uh, cupric sulfate or copper two sulfate, when dissolved in water, becomes aqueous, and it's the water that's actually giving it that blue color. Another thing is with, uh, with the copper two sulfate, sometimes it's actually found in kids, uh, chemistry kits, right? Because it's actually used to create crystals. Uh, it's also known as a, uh, a fungicide that uh, can be used to kill fungi. What I've done is I've got them in these two, these two little test tubes. And actually I, I did this experiment on Friday to, to demonstrate that what happens when we mix together the two, we actually form a precipitate, which is collected at the bottom. It's a solid form. So notice here now that we've got two liquids, right? Two aqueous solutions, right? Literally, it looks almost kind of, you know, could have been water and water with a little bit of food coloring, right? The way we're convinced, that's what it could be. But when I mix the two together, mix the two together, and I let it sit for a little while, and it's not going to sit. And if you look at that, right? You look at this, and then you look at that. And this over time, the reaction actually is going to need time for it to take place. But what's happening right now in this is the following. What we have here in this cupric sulfate, because it's aqueous, what it means is it's no longer a solid. So it's no longer, the atoms are no longer put together. They're not attached in that crystal lattice shape. But what, what occurs now in here, in this liquid that we originally had when we were, before we mixed it, is that the copper ions dissociate in water. So they dissociate into coppers and sulfates, right? Coppers and sulfates. And so they're surrounded as cations and anions in solution, right? So that's really what's happening when they've been dissolved. They, they used to be as a solid all together, clumped together, but in water, this is what dissolving looks like when a salt Right, because it is an ionic compound, ionic compounds are salts. When they dissolve in water, that's what happens. Sodium hydroxide, when it becomes aqueous, does the same thing. Dissociates into its anions and cations. And they surround, pretty much they fill that beaker. So it's dissolved in water. But when I mix them together, Right? According to a double displacement reaction, we know that a metal, non-metal, metal, non-metal non combination, we know that the metal combines with the non-metal of the other atom or molecule, and that metal is going to combine with sulfate. So what we're in the end we're going to form in this solution is Na is going to combine with sulfate, um, copper, two, is going to combine with hydroxide. But the key to find out now, once we know that, is which part here is collected at the bottom? Which part is still aqueous? 
So what that means is one of these never did come together. One of them actually remained as their cations and anions in the solution. So the part that solidified is the part that is considered insoluble in water. So it's the part that when they come together, actually clump together and form the solid. You've got the solubility guidelines. And depending on where uh, they, they lie in the solubility guidelines, we'll notice the following. Copper, too, is considered soluble in water. Sulfate is also soluble in water. Sodium is soluble, oops, so I can't spell, soluble in water. So, so far three of the parts are soluble in water. This hydroxide is insoluble in water. But it all depends on what hydroxide is bonded with. It all depends on where it exists on that solubility guideline, which is going to determine whether or not it will remain in, uh, insoluble in water when it's mixed, or if uh, it will actually remain um, soluble within water. If we look at it, of the two compounds that we formed, this copper two hydroxide is what has the hydroxide. So which means this is what is probably going to be the insoluble substance, is going to be the part that actually collects at the bottom. And if you look at the guidelines, you will notice copper, even though it's considered soluble, copper is lower in the guidelines than hydroxide. Hydroxide is higher, higher in the guidelines. It's considered insoluble, but when it's coupled with something that's lower, even though that part is soluble, the part that's higher is what constitutes the insoluble substance. So this solid precipitate here that forms at the bottom, in fact, is the copper to sulfate. And the aqueous solution here up at the top Right, that liquid up at the top here is the Na pluses and SO4s. Na pluses, SO4s. So notice the Na's and the sulfates remained as ions, respectively, in their solu original solutions. When they mix together, the Na's and the sulfates, right, the sodiums and the sulfates, never did clump together and actually come together as a solid. Yeah. So if it's higher on the, in the periodic table... Then Not it's periodic table, on the solubility guidelines. If it's higher than that, then it's insoluble? It would, it's, it, it, it'll, that will determine whether it's soluble or insoluble. So the highest guideline is pretty much the alkali metals. They're all considered soluble. So the minute you see one of the alkali metals in your solution, you know that that's going to be soluble. That's kind of one of the hints to solubility. Okay. So if you notice here... So that dark blue, right, what do you think that is? That's solidifying. Copper. The copper to hydroxide. <coughs> and the liquid, the clear part, right now is? The sodium, the sodium sulfate. Right, and eventually over time, right, over time, this is going to look more like this. We just need time for the particles Right? For the atoms, or sorry, should I say the ions of copper and hydroxide to eventually find themselves in this solution. And as they start to find themselves, they start to kind of come together right, and solidify and form that precipitate.